This is Future Me introducing part two of the two-part video series on the disc brake uh, repair job. We're going to put everything together here uh, and bleed the brakes. And this will be a gravity bleed uh, in this situation. It just happened to work out. Uh, but I will explain how to do a uh, two-person pedal bleed uh, towards the end of the video. So anyhow, let's get started. All right, got the uh, grease lining the uh, seal. You don't want to put this on with it dry. So um, after you get the seal in, get a little bit of grease on that seal lip and then put it on the actual sealing surface that it'll ride on again our spindles are dry and the inside of our bearing inner bearing is dry and the outer one yeah which is there is dry as well so they are ready to go back in so when you lift the uh, spindle up on there lift the rotor up on the spindle you're trying to avoid getting uh any grease getting up into these surfaces here so that those inner inner races are right on the metal so i'm gonna do that next and then uh show how the uh spindle nut and the, the flat washer and the spindle nut go on okay setting the load on this flat washer back here up against your outer bearing which actually it's what's putting the holding force on compression force on everything uh is simple and tricky at the same time um now if you notice right now let's see can i yeah you can see that it scoots around um there's a little bit of resistance on it and let's see if we can listen in here. All right, see when I go in and out, you can tell there's uh, still some space in there. So what you will do is just give this just a scoochy woochy of tightness and Basically, it's when that washer stops moving around. Now, let's see. All right, so. Yeah, now there's a lot more force on it, um, but I can still move it, and that's about where you want it. Let's listen. Still a little bit. I mean, you can see where I'm holding the wrench. I'm just turning it till it just, you know, till very little effort um, stops turning it. So let's take a listen. Still a teensy weensy bit. Let's see. Yeah, it's about it's about there I don't want to give too much more because uh, the other trick is getting this to line up with the one and only hole so we are right about there um, so maybe just the teensiest weensiest more and then drop the cotter pin in so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna set the camera down for that because i kind of need two hands at this point all right so it took just barely um any effort uh to just all i needed to do was just scooch that in just a teensiest weensiest more the 
you know, it's, it's tightened in there. Um, you know, this is important because if it's too tight, you're going to burn the bearings up. No grease will be able to get in between the, um, uh, roller bearings and the races. Um, and if it's too loose, well, then the inner race starts to spin, uh, also generating heat. Um, and of course, if it's also too loose, then the, you know, the locking castle nut, let me show that it's just a second ago. There we go. So, um, that is set where I can drop a cotter pin in and then calipers go on. We're almost done. There's not much, not much left to do. Get everything hooked up and bleed it. I sprayed the Permatex Disc Brake Quiet on the back of the back of the pads, um, and they do put a warning on there because apparently some people don't understand, and they spray it on the friction side, not on the back. So, um, and then on this one here, this one I coat the whole back. This one here, I kind of get it just towards the ends because um, the center of it, the caliper's open. There's nothing there. All right, so these calipers, what was nice is they came with new um, hardware uh, that actually has some um, Loctite thread lock on the threads of the bolt already. So that was nice. So um, go ahead and I put this uh, lube on the surfaces that slide on the caliper and next i will put that oh well, i guess i can go ahead and just and do that right now um this guy here you can go ahead and drop in and then this guy here well i'm not going to be able to do it with holding the camera but that guy is going to go in here and his little ears are going to hook up under here you'll kind of hold you'll figure out what to do you kind of hold it and uh hook it up under here first then let it swing down and then you take your combination of that uh lock for lack of better words and that slide and um tap those back in do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, right, so after you get your rotors all mounted and cleaned up with lacquer thinner, go ahead and put your inner pad on. And again, this is on an 83 Ford F-150. And they used this same brake system for a long time. Um, going between makes and models, GM, Ford, Chrysler, um, <laughs> Lamborghini, <laughs> everybody's got their own different way of putting the pads in. Um, these are actually one of the best, quickest, easiest, simplest methods. Take your disc brake caliper lube and put it on both sides of the sliding surfaces that contact each other. Well, as it turns out, um, these have kind of a snug, tight interference fit. A lot of times they are usually loose. Like, could be tolerances, uh, or they decided to make them a little bigger. Um, so I ended up having to kind of take a drift and kind of tap them into place, both on the bottom and the top or inside or out. And on the inside, there's a little bit of metallic ear showing. I don't know, can we get any light in there? Um, where I was able to just grab a little edge of the metal backing and take a hammer and just tap that in with a drift. So, let's see, that means this should Stay together. Let's see if that happens. So I'm gonna hook it 
up under there. And then swing it in. All right, well, cool. Well, so, um, let's see if I can do this. So here's a little bit of the dippity do here. All right, so there's that. Put this together on this. We only need it on that surface because that's all it, all it moves. But you know what? I'm gonna need two hands here. So um, this we're gonna I'm gonna have to lift up the caliper a little bit. Then we'll hook this up in there and then tap it. Okay, so again, you'll need two hands to do it because you, you have to hold the caliper up and then take the assembly of um, this bracket retainer and this pressure slider, whatever you want to call them. Um, and just to start it, it just kind of have to tap them both at the same time. And don't, you know, you know, you shouldn't have to whack bang on it, just tap um, to get it. To get it started and uh so fiddling around with different methods so i could just best describe it uh for those of you watching um was to take the drift and um tap with the hammer and push in on it here it's face it's out uh, on this end because i went ahead and i wanted to tap it back a little bit so I was as centered as could be um, around here. I mean, that taper on that bolt will kind of pull it in but uh, and center it naturally, but, you know, you know why add extra work in there? Um, if you just center it to start with, you know it's right. So, um, and these parts are going to move around and locate themselves during use anyhow so um let's see go ahead and So kind of right let's go easy I'm sure there's a torque spec for this but you know if you use common sense and feel you know don't use a half inch drive on this with a super long handle if you don't know if you're able to see it but I was kind of like holding it like there so I wasn't all the way back on it and you know it'll just kind of you know it'll kind of just stop at the right place so yeah doesn't need any more than that um I'm probably gonna need both hands uh to do bring the line back down I want to clean the end of that anyhow um but again one washer inboard one washer outboard so I'm going to set the camera down and do that. Hey, once you got both calipers mounted, lines connected, um, fill your reservoir. And the bigger one is for the front because that's where most of your braking takes place. So your front will be bigger, will be your reservoir for the front will actually be on the rear of the master cylinder uh, and is the bigger reservoir that works your front brake so go ahead and fill that up and then if you're lucky and there was enough um fluid still in the system where am i here um 
you can start to gravity bleed it. It'll just start flowing. Now it's doing it on this side. I don't think it's doing the other side might have drained itself dry. But uh, if both of them uh, will flow freely like this, what's nice is it just makes it quicker and easier to bleed the system. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and since I have fluid flowing through there, uh, I'm going to close that one up. I'm looking over at the other side. I don't think I have any flowing over there. So um, this is where you will need two people. So the technique is, because I'm not really going to be able to film that and do it at the same time, but the technique is um, you have your assistant push, uh, close up all your fittings, but uh, open up the one you want to bleed, which in this case, you always start with the one farthest away and the rear should not need any bleeding. Um, no air should have gotten into that system uh, if it hasn't been touched proportioning valve ha oh good we're getting we're getting a flow over here too so um, so yay so we will start on the right hand side um, and I'll have to snug both of these down and then what you will do is have your assistant push the pedal down and hold it um, while you open this up. Now, generally what I do, there's two different ways. They can push it down, hold it, and then you open it up. I generally um, uh, have this open to start with. Have your assistant push the pedal down and hold it, and then you close it, and then let the pedal back up. The reason for that is you'll just suck air back into the system so you'll have this um you know seesaw push me pull you of um air and fluid go you'll push the air out and then you'll just suck air right back in so push the pedal down with the bleeder open close the bleeder then have your assistant let the pedal up then go ahead and open this back up push it down and once you you watch the stream and um, you'll see bubbles if there's air in it and um, when the bubbles are gone uh, you've got the air out then you tighten this side down and you monitor your monitor your fluid level um, every few pumps take a look at that and make sure you're still high in the cylinder and at some point you will have to fill it now mind you there are better cleaner I'm doing this outdoors on an old beat up driveway um, so it's really not an issue um, ideally put something down and hook a rubber hose put some fluid in a can or a bottle um, like a quarter inch oh, there we go a quarter inch hose will like fit over the end of this um, will fit right on this part here but sometimes it wants to pop off and you have to use a bigger hose like a 3 8 and go all the way up uh, and you put it down into a bottle and um, with some fluid already in it and you'll see the bubbles and then as you go along you will notice that the fluid just goes up you repeating that process of opening closing it but when you do that, you have to take the hose on and off every single time. And that just kind of slows you down. So if you're in a setting where you can, you know, not worry too much about this stuff getting on the pavement, um, you know, do that. Um, keep in mind that, you know, once this thing starts building pressure, it's going to shoot pretty far. And brake fluid does destroy any painted surface it gets on. So just keep that in mind. And also be careful during the bleeding process that, uh, especially if the system is closed, uh, you will have so much pressure in that system that you're going to squirt fluid back up out of the reservoir. Um, so, again, brake fluid destroys every painted surface it gets on. So, um, just be mindful of that while you're bleeding um, 
and you have either side open and your system is your assistant is pushing gently um, it is generally not an issue it is a good idea though to put the cover over the master cylinder and you can just kind of gently hook it um, because there probably will be some fluid pushing up and out of it, and especially when you build up pressure, you're so focused on the wheels itself that, you know, every time the pedal gets pushed, there's whoosh, a fountain. There's like the Bellagio in Vegas coming out of here. So um, good idea to just keep the cover on there. So something you can do to tell if you've got air in the lines, uh, it's really the way to tell is you hit your brake pedal twice, you know, in a row, just like that, boom, boom. And it should go to the same exact spot if it goes way, way down and then you hit it again and it only, and it, it then it, you know, stops a lot higher. You've got uh, air in lines because air compresses and fluid does not. So that's how the whole system works. I had gravity bled this and that's the first check I did. I came in and, you know, went boom, boom, and the brake pedal went to the same spot. So I know that the gravity bleed worked okay and I didn't have to do a pedal bleed with, uh, you know, someone working the pedal while I was uh, working the bleeder valves. Well, from what I can tell, uh, both sides have gravity bled. Uh, left them both open and, you know, saw one side bled and then uh, the other side just had good free flowing fluid coming out of them. So um, filled it up, topped it off, put the cap on uh, and hit the pedal and it's a good, strong, hard pedal. So um, in this case, and it, it does often work where you can gravity bleed it like that. Uh, just has to have some fluid in the system to start that siphoning effect. So fluid has to be in the lines. Uh, you, you like if you put a system together from scratch, it's not going to gravity bleed. You know, it would dry everything. Uh, anyhow, use this um, anti seize lubricant. Uh, put this on your wheel studs. Uh, I also use this on exhaust bolts. Uh, so, um, and the other thing you'll notice, the tire, always put your tires underneath, um, and just in case there's some kind of, some kind of oops and anything could happen and this will at least catch it. Um, so I always, always put tires underneath in a place that, um, if they hit, it's gonna, it's going to catch them before they go to the ground and it's not going to hit the rubber. It's going to hit in, you know, good hard in the edge of the rim, the metal. Okay. Here's a back saving tip on how to put your tires back on. Uh, first thing you want to do is if you always line, th and this applies to just about anything, uh, have stuff set up, uh, so you know where what you're trying to attach is. So anyhow, got the uh, wheel stud here at 12 o'clock, and then bring your wheel in. Uh, also, have your lug nuts within reach. And what you're going to do is um, what's called an Asian squat. You're going to grab the tire like this so if you put your kind of put your elbows right inside your knees uh then you're gonna just you're just gonna lift up and i'm gonna go ahead and move the camera back but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift up and push this on here we are we're ready to go back on i'm in my squat and just on you go and then often the bottom of the wheel will kick out so really what you want to do in fact if you let it go um, that's the way it wants to go 
grab a bottom lug nut first and get that on and then you know how to put lug nuts on i don't need to need to show you that but just in case you do you do the star pattern boom 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 always go across okay just took it on uh, it's probably like a four mile trip or so and let's see we got uh 154 155 on this side and One sixty-five, sixty-six on this side. So that's down like two hundred degrees from where it from where it was. So um, doing really good right there. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and useful, go ahead and pump that like and subscribe button, and comment and share. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.